In this episode, we will begin to play with this image. The final result that you see here is a combination of layers, render layers, render passes, different weird looking materials, and quite a few nodes that combine everything together. If you see such setup for the first time, you may wonder, why on earth would anybody want to create such complicated tree when probably it would be much easier to set good materials, good lighting, hit render and the image is ready. Then use six, seven nodes to enhance the final result a little bit. But this is crazy. Yes, it may seem so, especially when you are working on not very complicated still image with a render time of few seconds. In such cases, it's easier to simply change the material, hit render, see if it works, change it again, hit render again, and finally get the desired look. But if the render time is few minutes or even hours sometimes, it's better to have the access to several components of this image to be able to change them after rendering. Or imagine the animation. Let's say 15 seconds, 25 frames per second, which gives us 375 frames. Imagine that each frame renders for 5 minutes. It gives us more than 30 hours of rendering. And then you feel that you want to change something. Or your client asks you to change something. Would you then prefer to wait another 30 hours? Or simply change one of the parameters in one of the nodes and you're done? I choose the second option. But this approach requires some preparations. We have to first separate several things, like render passes to have the access to reflections, color, color diffuse, normals, shadows, specular, direct lighting, separate the elements, like rims in this case, several passes for the rims, separate some materials, another element, different passes for this element, background, and as well, passes for the background. But the first and the most important thing would be to separate the render from compositing, such that we render all of those components and then combine them together without having to re-render. But it wouldn't be very wise to render 50 or 60 sequences of images. It's better to use multi-layer OpenEXR file format. This file format stores all of the components in one file. Then in Node Editor we add the input image and when we select the multi-layer OpenEXR we have the access to all of the render passes of all of the render layers exactly the same as if we used the input render layer. When I am working on some more complicated compositing setup I very rarely use input render layer even if I am working on a still image. It may seem a lot easier to add input render layer and start all of your connections here because when you need to re-render you simply hit F12 and your compositing setup updates automatically. This input render layer is in fact the multi-layer OpenEXR but it's not saved to your hard drive. It's only in your RAM. If Blender crashes you have to reopen it and re-render. If you stop working on the file, close it and reopen after some time, you have to re-render. But I don't use input render layer, but pre-rendered OpenEXRs that here I have as an input image. This way, when I open the blend file, I don't have to render before I start working on my compositing. Sometimes though, something weird may happen, like in this case. This must be some kind of a bug. The data in the file have to be reorganized somehow, here all of those input images refer to exactly the same file and in such cases I often open another image editor window, open my multi-layer render here, hit N and refresh the image. I don't know what's the magic behind it, but when I do so, my result gets back to normal. Okay, but what if I have to re-render? It requires some additional steps, but it's rather easy. I re-render then save my result as a multi-layer OpenEXR. Here, as you can see, I have several versions of this render. Then here in Image Editor, I open the data block that is my render used here as several input images. As you can see here, this data block doesn't have the name of the file. 
I simply called it render and I replaced the source of this image to my current render. But it's easy to make a simple mistake here. There are two elements here. One is called the image and that's just an image data block. And this is the source of this image data block. When I hit open here, I am in fact creating another image data block. But I want to use the same data block, but change the source. So I have to hit open here. And I select the file that I want my source to be replaced with. In some cases, I may have several versions of my render. This way, it's rather easy to see which version of my render works better. I simply replace the source. In some cases, though, when I replace the source, it may destroy everything here especially when you add another render layer that didn't exist in previous source or activate or deactivate some render pass. The elements, the passes that are stored in multi-layer EXRs have some order. And if you change something in your render layer setup, this order changes. So you may encounter the situation that here, for example, when we used the previous source, the specular pass of the body render layer was connected to this node. And after replacing the source, you have different render layer here or different render pass here. But there is a solution to such scenario and you see it here. We should separate our setup from the sources. We should name the nodes so that we know exactly what they should represent. This node, input image, I named this node. I gave it the label. The label says that it's body. So I know that here I should have the body render layer selected. If for any reason I have something else here, I know that I have to change it because the name that I gave previously says body and here I have glass. So I have to change it to body. But that's not all. Sometimes something weird may happen here. So I never connect the output of the input image to any meaningful node, but I pass it through the placeholder. This is just a mix node that is muted, so it does absolutely nothing, but it has the label, and I called it spec. So I know that this is the starting point of the specular pass of the body render layer. If this and this doesn't match this and this, I have to reconnect this. This requires some preparations. But this way, I can even delete all of the input images and my setup remained untouched. So I can look here and if I named everything properly, I can easily reconnect all of those to the proper sources. And now it's time to make a decision. Which elements should we be able to treat separately during compositing? Some of the options are rather obvious. We should separate the background from the car itself but the car shouldn't be treated as the whole. We would want to have the separate access to the car paint, to the rims, maybe to this part, and we would definitely want to render the transparent elements separately. Object index is one of the options that we have, object index or material index. When we select the object, go to the object buttons, we can set the pass index, then we have to activate the object index pass, and in compositing, we take the index OB output, pass it through the ID mask, converter ID mask, set the number of the index, and we have the alpha channel of this element. It's not anti-aliased, but we can smooth it. Having in mind that this is just a post process, it's not the proper anti-aliasing. But in some cases, this level of accuracy is enough. Like here. If we want to be more accurate, we can place the elements in other layers. Like in this case, I have placed everything that has the material of the car paint in this layer. Here I have some elements, here some other elements, more elements here, some more here, and so on. In this layer, I have only the elements that belong to the background. And now there are two levels of accuracy. Like in some cases, it's enough to have the good alpha channel, better alpha channel that can be achieved using the object or material index. In other cases, 
I want to have full separate renders of certain elements. Like, I would like to have the access to the background as if the car didn't exist. I want the car to cast the shadows here. Or if I had any reflective elements, I would like the car to reflect in them. But my goal is to have something like this. So I have the full render. I have different render passes for this background. Like ambient occlusion, color, color diffuse, and some other passes. And the car doesn't exist here. So I set the separate render layer for the background. I tell it to render only the objects from layer number 11. Set the passes that I need. And this way I have the full control over the look of the background. Then for the car I set another render layer. I tell it to render all of the layers that contain the parts of the car. So in my case, as you can see, all of the layers from 1 to 5, then 6 and 10. So this one, this one, this one, and so on. So as the result, I have this. I have activated several render passes, like ambient occlusion, color, color diffuse, and some other. So I placed the parts of the car in different layers, but anyway I decided to render them all at once. Because in this case I decided that the good alpha channel of certain elements, certain parts, is enough for me. But to get the good alpha channel I don't use objects or material index, but I set the separate render layer for certain parts and I have created separate material, white shadeless material, which I used as the material overwrite for this particular render layer. So that's my result. Perfect alpha channel. And I can use it to make some adjustments to those parts. Then when it comes to transparent elements, I have placed them in separate render layer, separate layer and render layer. And here I used some layers as the mask layers, as you can see, so that those elements are covered by other car parts. I have set the materials of those objects not to be traceable. Here, as you can see, the traceable option is turned off because I didn't want those elements to influence the rest of my image at all. But at the same time, I wanted the elements from the other layer to reflect in those objects, to cast the shadows on them. And this is taken care of by the materials of those other objects because the objects from other layers have the traceable option turned on. All those elements will eventually become transparent, but I didn't set any transparency in the materials. Alpha is set to 1, transparency turned off. I will take care about the transparency in compositing. And there's another thing, the colors of those materials. For the transparent parts, I don't care about the colors of the material at all. I will set the final colors in compositing, so I can use the colors for some other purpose, like further separation. So for example for the windows, I have set the color to be pure blue, 100% for the blue channel and zero for the remaining channels. This one is 100% green and this one 100% red. So now in compositing, when I take the render layer responsible for those elements, I called it glass, I can take the color pass of this, separate this into channels, and when I take the green channel, for example, it's the perfect alpha channel of the covers of the front lights. Blue, alpha channel of the windows. This, as you can see, is covered by the parts of the car from other layers. But I as well have the alpha channel so depending on whether I wish to treat separately this part and this part, I can use the alpha channel or those channels. So those are the ways to separate the objects. I can also separate the lights. I can create the groups of lights and in render layers, I can say that this render layer should be illuminated only by the lamps that are grouped into this particular group. All of the other lamps will be ignored. So as you can see, there are quite a few render layers here, some of them created just to have the good alpha channel, some that are really separate renders like background, and some that render everything but using some material overwrite. I created some separate material that allows me to get the render pass that doesn't exist by default here.
and there are no general rules. Every scene is different. We have some limitations, like only 20 layers. Sometimes it's not enough. That's why in some cases we have to use the tricks like color codes, and sometimes we have to live with all of the limitations of object or material indices. Anyway, this is just an introduction. When we go deeper into it, you will be able to better understand why I chose this setup of render layers, this setup of layers, and why I chose one approach to some parts, another approach to another parts. And it's not always obvious which approach should be used to which objects, and changing your mind during the process is nothing bad. It is sometimes not easy, but that's how it goes. So, in general, those are the ways of separating certain elements of our render.